All right, walking here to a service call. This is a unit that I serviced uh, less than 60 days ago, and older unit, Goodman R22, um, and now it's not cooling. So I have a policy in my company that if I give your unit a clean bill of health, uh, that if it breaks down within 90 days, my service call fee is waived. Um, I actually did not give this unit a clean bill of health just because of severe lack of maintenance over the years. Um, but, you know, we're going to see what we find. And if it's the right thing to do to waive the service call fee, if it's something that I miss, I absolutely will. If it's not, then obviously, uh, you know, it needs to be billable. All right, older heat pump here, and it is tripping the circuit breaker as soon as the AC tries to come on. So we're going to do some further diagnostics and see what the problem is. And we're going to start by unwiring the compressor and the outdoor fan motor, and we're going to ohm them out. All right, we've got two sets of three wires. These wires come off the compressor. And these wires come off the outdoor fan motor. We're going to ohm these out. We're going to ohm them out winding to winding first, and then we're going to ohm them out to ground. Now, it's important when you are ohming out a motor that you completely isolate it, disconnect it from everything, and make sure that none of the wires are touching each other or touching ground. So uh, I've got these dangling out here where they're not going to get in trouble. Those go to the compressor. These are my outdoor fan wires. So again, when I'm ohming these out, I just need to make sure they're not touching anything or each other. Okay, I just picked two of the three wires and they are reading 130 ohms. Now let's read another of two of the three wires. Okay, and these two are reading 54. So, so far we've got 130 and we've got 54. And then the last two wire combinations are reading around 76. So we have 130, we have around 54 and 76. Now what's interesting is that 76 plus 54 equals 130, and that is exactly what you're looking for because two readings should always add up to the third one. That's just how the motor is wired. The reason why the both of these add up to the total of 130 is because when we're reading across our, in this case our brown and our purple wire, we're reading across both the start and the run winding. When one of our leads is attached to the black wire, which is our common wire, then any reading that we take is going to be the individual winding. So we may read either the start or the run, but by hooking up this way we read them both. And so again, always Two of the readings should add up to be the third. If they don't, then something is wrong with your motor windings. The next test is ohming it out to ground. And you sh really should ohm out all three wires to ground. I'm gonna tell you that if you have a grounded motor, all three are gonna measure to ground. So if you don't measure to ground on the first, chances are you're not gonna measure to ground on any of the others. But we're gonna go ahead and do that just because we're, we wanna be thorough. I like taking an alligator lead and hooking it right to the screw that the ground lug goes on with, uh, or you can either find the ground wire itself. You just want to make sure you have a really solid ground. We have an open load to ground as well. OL means open load. That means that there is no connection. Zero means that there is a connection. There's no ohms. There's no resistance to ground. That would be a direct short to ground. In this case, OL is open load. That is what we're looking for. And finally, the third is reading open load. So I'm going to say electrically wise, this condenser fan motor is good. Now let's move on to the compressor. All right, we're measuring our compressor. I've got everything else isolated. I've got my leads to my black and my yellow wire. I'm reading 1.9. Now I'm hooked up to my black and my red, and I'm reading 0.9. Finally, I'm hooked up to my red and my yellow, and I'm reading 3.0. So 0.9 plus 1.9 is really close to 3.0. Um, that is close enough for this kind of diagnostic. So, so far, our compressor is reading okay. So what should a compressor windings read? Well, if it's a Copeland compressor, you can go to the Copeland app and you can look that up. They give you that information, makes it really easy. In my career, I have not seen very many compressors where as long as the two windings added up to the third winding, just like we just tested, then I've never had a problem uh, with the compressor winding still being bad if that checked out okay. But I know others have, so there's always an exception to the rule. All right, and we're reading the red wire to ground, and we have an open load. 
Same thing with my black wire. I've got an open load to ground. That's good. And finally, my black wire is open load to ground. So obviously there is still a problem that we haven't found yet because we unwired everything, checked the motors out, both the condenser fan motor and the compressor. They are all reading okay. So we may have something else. Maybe a wire has rubbed out and is shorted to ground. We're going to have to do some digging. Okay, so the breaker that serves this disconnect is turned off plus the disconnect is pulled out. So there's no way this is getting energized. So what I'm gonna start doing is just checking to ground at various spots, starting with the disconnect, being methodical and intentional, and just working my way into the unit. And eventually I should find this ground. All right, we're just gonna check the wiring for rub outs and just see if there's anything else that we may have missed that maybe it's shorting to ground when a wire touches it and then later on it doesn't touch ground. You know, those intermittent things I've seen a ton of. Uh, this tape connection was here when I got here. We'll be taking a look at that a little bit closer uh, and just see if there's any other reason why this would have tripped a breaker. So far, with one lead attached to ground and the other lead just kind of hopscotching around the unit, I am not finding anything that is grounded. So this is starting to baffle me a little bit. And our wires, when we unwired it off this circuit breaker, uh, we're ch checking to see for a dead short leg to leg. We're not seeing that. The next thing we're gonna check is a short to ground. Okay, so I've grabbed a ground and I'm checking one of the legs, still open load. We're gonna move this to the other leg, still open load. So it appears like we have a bad circuit breaker. So just because a circuit breaker is being replaced and it is a certain breaker size, before you go get the replacement breaker, you should always make sure that you're getting the right size because sometimes wrong size breakers get put in, they get left in for a long time. So you need to go to the unit nameplate. All right, so breaker is installed, haven't turned it back on yet. Everything is wired correctly in the unit. I've done my full system check to the extent possible. Obviously the unit was not functional. So we'll have a few things to check once we get it up and running, but I feel pretty confident that once I turn this breaker on, the unit's gonna come on and uh, we're gonna be just fine. Well, nothing caught on fire. Let's go see if the unit came on. All right, well everything is checking out so far so good. We're gonna go ahead and run a measure quick non-invasive test. There's no need to gauge up. Uh, and just make sure there's no surprises there and we'll wrap this one up. So obviously I stand behind what I do but because a breaker in the breaker panel failed it's not in my 60 point uh, assessment and it, it shouldn't be. That really falls under electrical uh, contracting services which I'm not a licensed electrician. So the fact that breaker needed to be replaced is billable. Uh, my diagnostic is billable and because I do submit all the reports anytime I do something full 60 point assessment, pictures, photo documentation, the customers understand. They understand this had nothing to do with the service that I just did a couple of months ago the units operated flawlessly since then just sometimes things happen parts fail and so this really helps protect me as a contractor so that I'm not having to either choose between giving somebody a service call that is not fair to me or having to do something sketchy just so that the service call can be billable lesson here is be thorough photo document everything no matter if you're coming back for a quick call just have it built into your business model that you do your multi-point assessment every single time. I hook up Measure Quick. I just make sure everything's working every time. It gives me peace of mind and it just makes my business operate better. So consider putting those processes in your business. Obviously, Measure Quick is part of mine. I suggest you look into that. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching and as always, work safe.